Hey yo, how's it going with this channel's faithfuls, the Chico Army, and of course any newbie who I like to call a viewer of the tube. If you don't know by now, my name is Tyler, the host of the only crypto channel that at first shocks you and then brings the entire house down. You know our Zeus juice. It's time for Chico Crypto. So did my video shock you last week, which brought forward the evidence out there that Elon Musk could be Satoshi Nakamoto? Did you hear what I just said? he could be, because there is so many different possible candidates out there besides Musk, which makes some sense. Hal Finney, We Die, Adam Back, and even Dave Kleiman. But there is one more who makes my list as a contender, who hasn't been discussed much, and it ties back to my number one hodl, which is oh so stanky. That is Chainlink founder SN, Satoshi Nakamoto, or Sergey Nazarov. How is a flan man himself a candidate for Satoshi? Chainlink was a 2017 ICO. Didn't Sergey create it around that time? Well, actually no. Chainlink has been in the works for a long time, longer than most people realize, which relates back to the domain smartcontract.com, which today is a landing page for Chainlink smart contracts. So how does this website domain provide evidence that Sergey could possibly be Satoshi? Well, the first thing is when the domain was registered. Using whois.net, a domain information and lookup tool, we can see that smartcontract.com was officially registered on October 25th, 2008. 2008. Does that year ring a bell for anything important, especially the month of October? Well, the first email Satoshi sent announcing the release of the Bitcoin white paper was done on October 31st, 2008. So just six days before the release of Bitcoin to the masses, Sergey Nazarov secured the domain smartcontract.com and the email he used to register it with. We can do a reverse lookup of it and see what else he has also registered. A flurry of domain names from 2008 on, names which will become important. All of that right there is weird alone, but the fact that smart contract was secured points to something. As towards the end of Satoshi's time with Bitcoin, he started posting more and more about contracts, especially those smart ones. Here's a post in 2010 about an escrow contract Satoshi was coming up with for Bitcoin. And then in December of that same year, 2010, Satoshi announced the release of version 0.3.18 of Bitcoin Core. And as we can see, Satoshi said, the main addition in this release is the accounts based JSON RPC commands that Gavin's been working on. JSON RPC commands? Well, if we go to Ethereum, which is the granddaddy of smart contracts, we can see from this infographic, JSON RPC is an interface for the smart contract calling function. So obviously Satoshi was thinking smart just before leaving Bitcoin. As just a few months later, he sent this email to a group of core devs he was speaking with. Some of his last words when asked if he was stepping back from the limelight. I've moved on to other things. It's in good hands with Gavin and everyone. Were the other things Satoshi was doing in relation to smart contracts, like smartcontract.com? Well, let's dive deeper into that domain and see what we can come up with. Going a bit further, we can confirm once again that yes, it was registered six days before the Bitcoin white paper, but here it shows the registrant. It was indeed Sergey Nazarov, but there is also something special, the registrant's organization, which says QED Global. And here's where things start to really pick up. Remember that name, QED Global, as Sergey registered it back in 2012. So the domain for smartcontract.com, it lay dormant from the time of registration, 2008, until the launch of the actual website in the latter half of 2014. I wonder what the original smartcontract.com looked like. We know what it looks like today, all spiked up with those chain links, but using Web Archive for its first published version, oh shoot, that's a ton of Bitcoin, isn't it? Looks like smart contracts for Bitcoin, including an escrow contract, which Sergey or Satoshi termed a conditional Bitcoin escrow contract. Smart contracts like this from Sergey or Satoshi were meant to happen with Bitcoin. One of the last things he posted in the forums was regarding the ability for smart contracts and JSON RPC calls. But Bitcoin doesn't use JSON RPC. It uses its own thing now called Bitcoin RPC. And it is used by authenticated clients and servers to connect to a running instance of Bitcoin. The clients 
issue commands to send transactions, get status, and a variety of other purposes, basically to call contract functions. But Bitcoin RPC is Bitcoin specific and not friendly to the outside world of APIs and more, which causes major problems. But JSON RPC was implemented back then with Bitcoin when Satoshi was there. As we can see from the Bitcoin wiki, they have a whole section on JSON RPC. And in it, we see Bitcoin supports SSL HTTPS, JSON RPC connections, beginning with version 0.3.14, exactly when Satoshi was still around. But what the freak happened to it? Well, continuing, allowing arbitrary messages to access a JSON RPC port is dangerous and strongly discouraged. Access should be strictly limited to trusted machines. Then there's this from the wiki, enabling SSL on the original client daemon, but that was removed and no longer available on Bitcoin Core as of March 2019. And as we can see from the historical comments, it says this no longer applies as RPC SSL was removed and below it says JSON RPC over SSL is strongly discouraged even when it was around. That doesn't seem like what Satoshi wanted from Bitcoin as he posted on it being worked on just before he left. And it kind of looks like from Sergey's own smartcontract.com website that even in 2014 when it went live he wanted Bitcoin too. But do you remember from just a bit ago from the Who Is registration, it said the registrant's organization was QED Global, and I said that was important. Now why? Well, let's just go to their website today and look who is still listed as their managing director, a very young picture of Sergey Nazarov. So. Who is QED? Well, Sergey has them listed as part of his job experience. And it says, QED Capital provided founder-friendly venture capital to highly technical founding teams in Russia and Eastern Europe. It then says, after the first Bitcoin price spike to $30 plus, June 2011, QED Capital turned its attention towards cryptocurrency research and mining. With the emergence of altcoins that offered the first smart contract functionality, we refocused on applying blockchains beyond cryptocurrency and the real world applicability of smart contracts. Then it says, through research, extensive technical due diligence, and active participation in multiple cryptocurrency communities, QED eventually led to the creation of an expert technical team that would make the first blockchain-based webmail, CryptoMail, and one of the first live, widely used decentralized applications that use smart contracts to move real value, secure asset exchange. Which, if we scroll up, of course, Sergey was the co-founder and CEO of each of these. So why is QED and all of this important? Well, Russia, Russia, Russia. QED is Russian, and they have their servers and clients in Russia. And they registered the domain with Sergey. And then, just a month ago, Cointelegraph came out with an article titled, Bitcoin Code Reveals Satoshi Nakamoto Used a Russian Proxy. And the article states, as early as 2000, 2009, Satoshi relied on a Russian proxy, and the telltale signs appear in the file irc.ccp on line 212, although the details of it were hidden with a cipher, which they were able to crack. The article continues, this cipher seems to work by removing all the zeros and then converting the numbers from a hexadecimal notation to decimal. That produces what looks like an IP address, 87.25.146. At the time, the proxy was provided by Anders Telecom. It has apparently been defunct since 2016, but we can confirm here that yes, the proxy was indeed Russian from Anders Telecom. And Cointelegraph did a search of the IP used for the proxy, 87.251.146. And you wouldn't guess what they found. They found that same IP proxy posting hotel reviews in December 2008 with the name Sergey. And then again in January 2009, Sergey posting from that proxy in a thread about Russian speakers in Vietnam. Wow, wow, we wow. The Russian ties to Satoshi. As if you didn't know, the Bitcoin talk forum Satoshi created, Russian was the first non-English section of it. But I want to play you something to finish this episode off with. Sergey speaking at a 2014 conference about blockchain smart contracts, even before Ethereum was released. Let's begin. Yeah, so I think a lot of the focus right now is on smart contracts and how you can get smart contracts 
working into some form of minimal viable product to get it out into the market because I think a lot of people are eager to see the potential of the blockchain be realized. Yes, he says the full potential of the blockchain. Now let's just go back to a JSON RPC thread from Bitcoin Talk in 2010 Satoshi was a part of. Regarding JSON RPC, he said this, as long as the interface is designed for things like showing the user last in transactions history, it's fine. Now that we have the accounts feature, making it easier to do payment detection the right way. Gavin could list transactions, have option to list transactions for all accounts. Which who is working on it? JSON RPC, Gavin Andreessen last replied that year, 2010, about it. Yes, list transactions is possible. The other account routines could return a new invalid account name error if given. I've got two issues with it though which he lists. And the next comment about this JSON RPC idea, 2013. A random user asks, what is the new state of affairs regarding this issue after three years? Is there a way to pull or get notified when things happen on the network? No, there wasn't. Development for Bitcoin had failed to get to the full potential. To solve some of these problems, Satoshi was last talking about, which Sergey was plainly saying at the conference with the release of Ethereum, as the crowd sale for it was going on at that time, 2014. Let's continue. And now a lot of the conversations about are about how do you make, how do you tr in a trustless way verify, and then more importantly, based on that verification, based on did the person do X or Y or something else, how do you kick off enforcement in a way that's also trustworthy, right? So uh, those, are, those are very big problems, okay. but I think the technology to solve them is, is finally emerging. And I think that, that, that there are a few people that aren't, aren't waiting. Yeah, Bitcoin was waiting. Sergey and Ethereum was not. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.